Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in the Cessna uh, Station Air 2Z206. Now, the 206 is co colloquially known as the station wagon of the air hence station era and it is a utility vehicle that's capable of carrying 3600 pounds uh, or lifting 3600 pounds which is uh, a little less than double the amount of the 172 which is uh, I think that's around 1700 pounds or somewhere there about anyway um, you can see that it's raining outside and Rhonda did try to model rain on the fuselage. Um, not so sure that it's working out the way they meant for it to work out, but um, but X-Plane 12 is newly released and hopefully they will circle back and fix the raindrops on the fuselage. But at least they at least they tried. Most of the aircraft that I've seen only do the raindrops on the windows and not the other surfaces um, but yeah so anyway it is what it is I've got scenic flower running in the lower left hand corner of the screen and I am using traffic global for AI traffic and I am at KRDU, the flight, the plan today is to fly to first flight on the coast of North Carolina. I think it's 177 nautical miles. The flight ought to take us roughly uh, about an hour and a half, um, maybe two hours. Okay, so let's get in the cockpit and get started here. Let's make this happen. So. Yeah, now it, uh, the station air does come with a with a flight with a checklist, and I've um, I've already did the pre-flight checklist, so I'm not gonna spend any time outside of the aircraft rechecking stuff. Um, virtually, actually, I didn't do the pre-flight, but that's between you and me. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we'll go straight to start the engine and let's see so yeah we're just gonna go through this checklist incidentally guys this is my third time flying the station air um, but before before I started I do I did want to take a little time and go through some of the features of this Ronda station air and I almost uh, forgot that okay so uh, in general you've got these features uh, right now if it's green then I'm good to go if it's red then I need some attention so it well it needs some attention and you know so this is with the covers and tie downs on and uh, all the doors are open and let me just pop outside so I can show you what that looks like <laughs> and yeah so so yeah here we go and uh, let's go ahead and close the doors because it is raining. Not actually, actually, let's open up the door on this side so you can see that it's got these big utility doors. Um, and it says all doors. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, good. And get the tie downs and covers off. Um, and one of those reflections are on, panel reflections are on, and it. These, th these things are in the default in the default position okay brakes are on and chalks it does model chalks um, and it does have a cargo pod for those who, who want to do some cargo missions um, all right so let's jump down to livery now, the livery that I'm using right now is a default livery. Of course, I, with most of Rondo's aircraft, I can create my own livery. Um, 
the only thing that I am going to do is edit my tail number. Let's see if um, I am flying November 1206 uniform. And let's see uh, if I can capitalize the U, that would be fantastic. Okay. And I'm going to apply that right now. It does take a few seconds to apply. And perhaps it won't apply. Well, let's see. Uh, actually, I've got to. Uh, what's going to happen, guys, is uh, this livery right here is going to pop in once I hit the, the primary apply. Do believe that that's what I'm looking at so um, a minute or two hopefully it won't take that long um, there's a lot of things going on up under the hood while this is happening and five four three two one da -da. well my timing was was never good so it did say a minute or two, so actually it is taking about a minute. Okay, there's our livery, and, there, and here is our tail number. Awesome. All right, so I did want to show you that we do have that capability. I'm, I can go ahead and save that livery. Um, let's see. Um, well, add it, add new livery. All right, so I can do. I can an exper I can experiment in my spare time, but as long as I got you guys with me, I'm just going to keep going. Weight and balance. Um, as with Rondo's aircraft, you do get this nice weight and balance um, configurator here. And let's see. So the pilot, uh, that's me, 175. Looks like a good number. And let's take on a passenger. And actually, we'll take on two passengers and a little cargo. Uh, let's do 60 pounds on the cargo. And I am certainly within my envelope for the, the center of gravity. All right. So, so yeah, I'm... Um, Good, go that and I'm gonna actually go ahead and save that so that hopefully the next time I start the aircraft it will remember this information looks like I can toggle my cargo pod on right here if I want it to uh, so there are actually two places I can toggle on the cargo pod so that's pretty cool camera uh, the, um, Rhonda has the camera set up just the way that I like them um, Four is my pilot view, and five shows me my instruments. Um, yeah, so so I don't see any need for me to change these, but you guys may want to change it. Um, my master volume, I like to have that pretty pretty far up, and radios co-pilot uh, won't be a co-pilot environmental sounds uh, if I was doing a bush flight incidentally this is often considered a bush plane um, then I then I could hear you know the outside environment a lot better but right now I should be getting the airport environment all right and panel the panel is fully customizable um, that would be another video uh, right now, I'm using the default panel, but um, but yeah, I could completely customize that the way I want it. Um, I could also um, put Tundra tires on it. Um, take them off because right now I'm using regular tires. Um, I do like the the window. See if I can't change the view a little bit. Um, I do like. Let's see, I'm not doing very good with changing the window view. 
uh, but I do like the fact that that you can pop out the windows to a bubble uh, give the the give you just a little bit more head on um, on the windows let's see okay, I can do it this way let's see what I'm talking about so these are the bubble windows and these are the flat windows so you can see the difference so I'm gonna leave it on bubble um, and looks like I've got some dynamic fill and this is fairly new I'm gonna leave these at 100% for right now and be okay with that all right so I just wanted to kind of briefly go through some of those features and you can see that the aircraft is dirty um, I do have the ability to to make the aircraft spanking brand new or keep it used the 206 station there was introduced in 1964 this is this one well in 1964 they had the continental engines in it this particular model has the La Common uh, 520 uh, IO engine in it, which means that it was made after 1996. So, uh, so yeah, this this one is a old aircraft, but it's not as old as some of the earlier ver variants of this aircraft. All right. So with that said, now let's get back and get the checklist up. All right, so starting engine, mixture of four rich, propeller, high RPM, uh, throttle is closed, and auxiliary fuel can go on, and that's down. Oh, uh, there, the back when this was made, you know, smoking, the tobacco companies was advertising cigarettes on TV and smoking was a big thing. Uh, a lot of Hollywood actors smoke uh, directly on screen, so, so yeah. All right, uh, auxiliary fuel switch is off, okay? Uh, that's what we want. Uh, prop area clear, so that's uh, clear prop. left and look right do have quick looks here and um, and let's go ahead and turn the ignition to, to start uh, the ignition should have been turned off uh, that's really dangerous uh, the reason why we keep the ignition off is because you know even if with it being in this both position in real life a good win it could actually start your aircraft now even though it's not said to do so I'm just gonna make sure that the brake is set and it looks like it is set okay good deal all right clear prop okay so one thing that was probably in a a uh, let's see yeah master switch here so since I didn't do the before starting the engine I skipped this uh, cow flax flaps are open uh, seat belts are set brakes are set uh, avionics are off and master switch go on Okay, fuel selector should be on the fuller tank, and, and I'm doing this kind of a little out of sequence. Uh, let's see, this is my, this is my fuel tank. So, okay. uh, so we got about the same amount of fuel in each tank, so I guess I'm, I'm good. Maybe a little bit more on my left. So we'll start it on the left tank. And I think the way this works is the long piece here is pointing to the tank that I want to be on. All right. 
so master is on and circuit breakers are all in um, Rhonda do tend to model circuit breakers so we do want to definitely check those this is great in case you want to practice some failures uh, especially if you own this aircraft practicing failures would be a really good thing all right so let's get back to clear prop and just kind of look outside it's raining like cats and dogs and it's pretty cold outside and so I'm sure that nobody wants to be out I don't know if you hear something taxiing in uh, uh, no, I think this guy right here he just started his his aircraft so we need to be aware of that situation of awareness right alright so here we go again I left those mags on that's a bad habit alright And you can see the the prop wash is is causing the rain on the windshield to speed up. So that's pretty cool. And some things that it didn't ask me to do that I should have did was made sure that my beacon light was turned on. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of a lot of my checklists have me check things like that. So. Um, I need to be more cognizant with this checklist that that it's um, just touched the major points. All right, so beacon light is on, and uh, the engine is running, and ignition switch is back to both. Uh, I've pretty much trained myself to take it back to both uh, because the Bravo throttle that not automatically do that. All right, um, and bring this guy back down to idle. All right, or pressure check, and should have did that the moment it started up. Still learning where stuff is at. And there is my oil pressure. Fuel EGT suction, um, air temp. That's outside air temp. That's cool. We got a clock here, um, and the clock is right. It is 8:55 a.m. Eastern Standard. And yes, I don't see the oil gauges, but like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah right here right here all right these gauges I just look right over okay I got positive oil pressure and oil temperatures are coming up so in the head temperature is still a little bit low but that should come up pretty soon flashing beacon and lights nav lights do um, can go on and because of the weather we will turn the nav lights on um, generally don't Turn them on in the daytime. Let's see. So I'm using the alpha yoke. And there we go. In fact, let me um, uh, let's see. Yeah, definitely we'll go ahead and definitely want the pedo heat on. I'm gonna turn it on right now. Uh, avionics power can come on. I didn't see anything to tell me to turn on the 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 generators or the alternators, so I went on and switched those on already. Um, okay, parking brake is set. All right, now this is before takeoff, so so yeah, looks like I'm pretty much ready to get my taxi. On. Our flaps are still open and because it's so chilly outside let's look at the outside temperature here uh, let's get in the first office of co-pilot seat uh, right seat here uh, 
such a look good. So outside temperature is about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so yeah, I'm trying to make, trying to see if I might need to close the cow flaps a little bit. But looks like the the cylinder head temperature is coming up a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and get the aiders. Uh, let's put in our flight plan. Uh, I actually have put that in already. So I'm just going to review it with you guys. Uh, pop this out, make it easier. Let's check out this. That seem to, to be. Oh, okay, wait. Actually, I'm look like. I thought these were the buttons, but it's actually buttons on the label. Okay, so um, this is my flight plan. The first waypoint is a GPS waypoint, Zebel, uh, and then um, TYI, Tar River, then a few more GPS waypoints, and uh, finally, uh, first flight which is Kill Devil Hills, which is where the Wright brothers actually did one of the, well, did the first flight in, um, the first powered flight in the world. Uh, well, the first successful power powered flight, uh, at least we want to think so. Okay, so 174 nautical miles from our destination. All right, so let's pop this back in. Yeah, uh, go ahead and get our ATUS. Um, 23.8. I've already tuned my radios. My transponder is set to alternator. Alternating is uh, actually with the weather. This is a um, a IR, a instrument flight rule flight, and I do need a transponder code all right and of course I always skip talking to trying to emulate talking to clearance delivery um, in my flights in fact lately I haven't even been talking to ground tower all right so let's oh, get 1350 this. Zulu arriving runway is zero five left zero five right departing runway is zero five left zero five right weather Wind zero eight zero degrees at six knots. Visibility six miles. Rain. Sky conditions broken at one thousand one hundred. Scattered at two thousand eight hundred. Few at seven thousand. Temperature six. Dew point five. Altimeter three zero zero seven. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Romeo. Romeo. Okay. So I think I got all that information. And Raleigh Durham Internet. So what we know is that winds are 080 at 6. Uh, we're using runway 05 and uh, for arrivals and departure at RDU. And we've got uh, cloud scatter at 2800 and a few at 7000. So I think a cruising altitude of about 8 thousand should be sufficient to get us up over the weather so yeah that's uh that's where we're gonna set our cruise to so let's um we're gonna put this in to eight thousand and um actually we're gonna do nine thousand because we're going east east is odd all right and yeah that um, keeps us out of having to worry about oxygen all right and we could go ahead and turn the mic, the put the headset on, and that mutes the engine sounds. Um, you should be able to tell that I can't really hear the engines, but um, but for the sake of making this video, I am going to let the the engine sounds play. In fact, let's get outside and take a listen to the engines.
and I think I did put an S on engine, <laughs> on engines, the engine. All right, so let's make this happen. So pop this back in. All right, so we are good to go. Uh, let's see. Let me pop the checklist back up one more time. What I want to see is run up. Yeah, so we. This is uh, before takeoff is our run up. All right, so we'll find somewhere to do that. Yeah, so let's let's uh, break, turn the landing light, our taxi light, and go on. And let's get our taxi on clear left, clear right. Altimeter was, did I get an altimeter? Uh, 3007. So let's, uh, let's double check that. 3007. And should have a backup altimeter. Actually, we didn't. We can add more instruments. Uh, to get our backup and all of that good stuff. Um, as I mentioned, we can do that in another video. All right, so where am I? Let's see. Uh, yep, I know where I'm at now. All right, so we're going to taxi to runway 05. that uh, right in the, uh, in the real life station there. So, don't want to get on the road there. There are vehicles in the area. All right, so we're going to turn to the left here. Found the yellow brick road. Alright, clear left, nothing there, clear right, nothing there. So we'll take Alpha here all the way up to five, uh, five right here. Uh, yeah, five right. All right. So keep checking stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our flaps. set for takeoff uh, um, and now the aircraft um, I've flown this aircraft I think about three times so this may be my fourth flight in it and in none of the previous flights that I did that I made a real and whole flight. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get a feel of how the aircraft felt. So, so this really is the first serious full flight that I'm taking in the aircraft. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, if I wasn't taxiing, I would give you a little tour around the cabin here but 
I found that for me, if I take my eyes off of the taxi and, and even look down for a minute, then I wind up <laughs> off the yellow brick road. So if I, you know, I see other guys uh, who are masters at being able to show additional views, and I can. love the trees in X-Plane 12, uh, the fact that, that they move around and that they change. Uh, what I don't like about them is they seem to, to be more sparse in than they would be in real life. You know, trees are often uh, several inches apart in dense forests, and you know, when I'm flying over them, it look like they're a few, um, a foot or two apart. Anyway, I digress. All right, so one thing I want to do is go ahead and turn up the the lights here. Okay, so I found that one. Zoom in so I can see what's turning here. Uh, yeah, turn this and turn this. Uh, these are flood lights, so I'm not say bright. Okay, and now we can set the break. Get the checklist. Parking brake is set. Doors and windows are closed. Um, the doors and windows are modeled. I'm trying to get that handle to go down. There we go. And I mentioned showing you guys the cabin a minute ago so yeah let's take a moment to do that uh, the station era does six does sit six people um, this time looks like Rhonda did not model the passengers which is a good thing because in X-Plane the passengers look really funky and uh, for most aircraft now some aircraft developers did take the time to to really model the passengers to a higher standard but I'm okay with not being able to see the passengers um, now that's one thing I do like about Microsoft Flight Sim they got some gorgeous looking passengers and you can change um, the race the nationality of the passengers, which I think is a wonderful thing, because I can have passengers and pilots who look like me. Okay, so um, cow flaps are open, flight controls are free and correct. And so, let's see, can we see out this out this window here? guess you can see a little bit and, and let's see if we can see out the back glass. And, yep, these big surfaces so that's cool. Alright, instrument check. Instruments don't look like they're all in working condition. I don't see anything funky. This ball is not all the way over to the left and 
Nothing spinning around. The vertical speed is where it's supposed to be. And yeah, I'm okay with instruments. Um, so the head temp is still a little warm. Um, but I'm still going to leave these cow flaps open. Um, and manifold pressure is, uh, I suppose, where it needs to be. Fuel flow is minimal. All right. And uh, idle is at uh, about uh, 1090 or so. All right. Um, throttle, let's see. Uh, fuel on the fuller tank, which is going to be the right tank at this point. And with some aircraft, we go to fuel boost. We turn the boost point pump zone to change it. I don't know if we need to do that with this one, uh, but I'm just going to do it. Uh, okay, auxiliary fuel pumps are off. Mixture is for rich and elevator and rudder control needs to be set. We did set the, let's see, Elevator and rudder. Uh, let's see. Yeah, rudder control look like it's in the right place. All right, and da, 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 da. where are we? Okay, now we're gonna do our big run up. So throttle up to 17 to 16. The, yeah, there it is, 17, and do I back need a check? Uh, we should get a different, a decent drop in RPMs. like I should probably add some instruments but yeah everything's working so so we're happy we're happy if you're happy and you know it clap your hands okay all right and suction we did check that um, in fact pedo heat wasn't in our list but we know to check that from experience all right throttle back to a thousand radios are set autopilot is off and stroke lights can come on uh, we'll do that when we take the runway let's go ahead and put our pedo heat back on because we are definitely going to need that today and stroke lights as desired uh, what could run this flight is if we pick up ice and it is a cold day today so we're going to probably have to stay a little bit low until we get if we can find a place to punch through. All right, friction lock on the throttle, um, adjust and parking brake can be released. And 
check our flaps, make sure that they are set. All right. All right. So next checklist is going to be takeoff. All right. Flaps are set. Here. Change frequencies. Alright, we're on tower frequency and clear for takeoff, runway 5 right, IFR 2, first flight. Alright, so we got our takeoff clearance. And we'll go ahead and turn our strobe lights on, our landing lights can go on. I keep wanting this to see the get lined up here. I keep wanting to see the the RPMs directly in front of me and they're right here. So so yeah, I would probably switch some things around. Um, if, um... Attention all aircraft. Rolly Durham International Altimeter 3006. Okay, so... This, that call out is an X-plane thing. And... That's, um, kind of unrealistic, because I don't think you get that call out in real life. Um, but... It is what it is. Hopefully, they will address that. All right. So, didn't have anything coming in, so there's no real rush to get to get off the runway. But we'll go ahead and get started. stable. Alright, so we're going to level off right now at about uh, 1500 for the moment. Let's check this.
uh, make use of my autopilot soon. Right now, I'm just hand flying it. So we'll pull this power back to, let's see, normal climb is um, 25 inches on the manifold, but that's, that's for climb. Uh, but I do know I want to pull the power back to the green. at 1,500 feet because of the weather. Um, hoping to find a place that I can punch through without so much rain. Um, let's see. Do need to pay attention to the outside air temperature. And we're still in the 40s, so we're good at 1,500. And because of the weather, as fast as we can. Um, let's see. Max performance climb is 84 knots with uh, 2700 on our on our power RPMs. to punch through these clouds even though we are IFR so, so yeah there's a place there's a place right up in here and so it looks like it looks like if we just maintain this 15 this Looks like if we just maintain 1500 for a little bit, we may find a place further down that we can punch through. Um, now I'm flying as if I'm VFR, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and punch through. What I don't want to do is ice up. Okay, so we're gonna do a max climb. to 2700 
Okay guys, I am back and we are getting pretty close to our destination. So we are, where are we? Uh, we are right here and we've got um, a 20 minute trek to Zenup. Then we are turn towards our airport first flight. And I think I'm close enough to get an ATIS. So let's see if we can't get an ATIS report for the airport. I've already entered the the AWAS frequency and let's see if it shows up. Deploy 10, altimeter 3010. All right, 3010. Automated weather observation, Dare County Regional Weather, wind 130 degrees at 11 knots, visibility 9 miles, sky conditions broken at 5,700, scattered at 13,000, few at 24,000, temperature 14. Deploy 10, altimeter 3010. Okay, and I think she said temp was 3. Dew point 13. Automated weather observation, Dare County Regional Weather. Wind 130 degrees at 11 knots. Visibility 9 miles. Sky conditions broken at 5,700. Scattered at 13,000. Few at 24,000. Temperature 14. Dew point 10, altimeter 3010. All right, so dew point was uh, 14. I mean, the temperature was 14. So that's well above freezing. And so, yeah, uh, visibility is nine nautical miles. So, yeah, we should be able to get this in. I did have to um, ask ATC for, for a lower um cruise altitude and they gave me two three thousand so yeah um that's clouds are at um, 50 the 5700 so yeah three thousand works all right so we are getting there So as soon as we get over this bridge, then see there are a couple bridges that we may have to trans transpire. I think we're gonna go over some land and maybe even a bridge up here, maybe. So on my right, there is a restricted area 
so I really can't go too far to the right even if I wanted to all right explain 12 ladies and gentlemen Up, up there a little I don't see it there it is yep there's the other bridge There's our restricted area that I was mentioning. So you can see how close we are to it. We got a 20 mile, um, I'm sorry, not 35 nautical mile uh, radius in f around the aircraft. Like that, yeah, 35 works for right now. So winds were zero one 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 three zero at eleven, and we've got runway two one and zero three. So we definitely want to come in on runway zero three I'm sorry let's say not let's say yeah, um, winds were one three zero and so yeah we definitely want to come in on zero three Actually, um, it looks like we might be better off using 2-1. Yeah, it looks like we're better off using 2-1, right? And 2-1 has a right pattern.
to trying to do the mail here. One three zero minus um see means a one three zero minus eleven. Ah should be um nine. Ah shucks. Ten, um ah shucks. Uh, nine. Ask me what I'm doing. I don't think I could tell you. Uh, why is this here? What's going on? What is going on? Why did that jump up there? Okay. So there is an airport below me. That's a private airport. channels and assumed that it might have been an airport. Okay, so ATC has given me 
direct clearance to my final destination and told me to uh, spark the FR. IFR is canceled. So let's make that happen. Two one right traffic. So I am not as talkative as I normally am on these videos, am I? Doing a descent rate six hundred feet per minute. At least that's what I want. Kill Devil Hills, ladies and gentlemen. And I've never flown into this airport before. But the airport should be... Looks like it should be right up in here. this one right here. I think it's a grassy field. This is going to be too... Let's see. Well, let's see. The orientation is wrong for that to be the airport. Never flown into it before. I'm just looking at maps. Maybe this is it. Yeah, this is it. Right here. That's about, that's about the right orientation. And we'll land coming back this way. I uh, don't know what this big white looking thing is on the, at the end of the runway. a building at the end of the runway or something. Alright. But yeah, that's our airport. It's not a grassy field. Get down to 15. Direct traffic. All right. 
And we go to our first blumps. Gas. Pull this tank. It's left. Well, the, so yeah, we're gonna switch to the left tank. Lights. Landing taxi lights on. Zero one three. All right, and parallel with the runway. A bit low. On the courage, fix, mixture, and prop. This got trimmed. Just occurred to me, I've never landed this aircraft ever. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, the flights that I've taken off in were just to get a feel for how it flew. So, don't judge me harshly. You guys be nice. Get flaps uh, in. Get on base. Find that airport. All right, turn the final. Find the airport. There it is. So. Four flaps because I am dropping pretty quickly. Pretty high. At least I look pretty high. I'm doing a visual landing, so. So, yeah. And. Okay, I'm on base now. Like there are two fields, and one of them I think is the memorial field that the uh, white, that the Wright brothers use. So uh, be careful not to land on that. Don't need a lot of runway to land this thing. All right, power's up four. for 60 knots. I'm not sure that's the right pitch or not, but that's what we're doing. said a great landing but that felt a little hot to me felt like I was coming in way too hot um, should have but I didn't want to go around all 
right. Jump off in this parking lot here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do it. A lot of cloud flying in this in this video, so I probably um, will remove some of that because you know it's probably boring. All right, let's see if we can find a parking spot. That makes sense. This one makes sense to me. like to do this see how close I get to to where I want to be and let's see yeah I think that's about it probably probably a little bit over the line yeah over the line and not pointed in a good direction but hey deals with the deals let's clean up Laps, lights, transponder, stand by, stand by, and trim. All right, so let's get our trim. Okay, trim is set. Very good. And Set brakes. All right. Pull the tank. The wrist switch was off. Mixture is for rich. Uh, we did a glumps test, so yeah, we're good. We were good for that. And normal landing. Um, we landed at about 60, so we're. A little bit slow. I uh, should have should have consulted the the this guide this checklist. Um, yeah, didn't stall though. Okay, um, wings are retracted, flaps are retracted, and uh, what was the other cow flaps? Uh, I think. There. Open those all the way. All right, parking brake is set, and go ahead and turn the engine off. And then switches. come out yep and what do we do with the key the key looked like it should have come out but I don't see what we did with it uh, that's okay and yeah so that does it for this flight now let's go back and take a look at the landing here up um, 
is trapped, so I can't use up out all aura. Um, let's see, this is probably a decent place to start. Felt like I was a little high, so I'm aggressive on on my descent here. Four flaps. Oh, ow. And you see that aggressive angle. Yeah, in my attempt to track that that middle line, I overcorrected them. But it wasn't that that bad. It wasn't that that wasn't good at all. But I've seen better and I've seen worse. All right, guys. So until next time. Y'all come back now, dude.